this is, I think, one of the, when you actually look at the customer acquisition cost, a lot of times founders tell me, yeah, we, our customer acquisition cost is 40 and the lifetime value is 10,000. And I'm like, how much money do you have in the bank? And they're like, we have $300,000. I'm like, immediately spend 100,000 yeah. <laughs> and get more customers. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, what's the hesitation? You should, what did you spend last month? Do you spend 2,000 last month? Why not spend 50,000 a month? Yeah. And they, I see that hesitation and I realize, okay, maybe there's something wrong here with the cap. And then it turns out, let's just take a little hypothetical early stage example here. They have a thousand customers. They spent a hundred thousand on Facebook and Google ads to get them hundred dollars a customer. But they hired an agency to do the work and they've got a CMO and the CMO has two people working for them. So they actually spent four hundred thousand yes. dollars and it's a four hundred dollar acquisition cost. They just left out seventy five percent of the cost because they just took the number that they spent on Google and Facebook and none of the other associated costs. That's, and that's where people get themselves in trouble. You're totally right. Also, sometimes if someone wasn't being honest, they might forget to factor in the churn, right? Right. And so they're kind How of- How many people left every month? Yeah, exactly. They might be in year one of this acquisition strategy. And so they actually don't have great data on what the churn's actually going to be. And so they make an estimate and they kind of like understate the churn, which then overstates the long-term value. So you get the overstated long-term value, yes. the understated cost acquisition, and you've got on yes. paper looks like the greatest company of all time, but but under the hood, it's not as strong as you might think. It's basically like people are giving themselves credit, um, you know, in some places, and then taking out the cost in other places. Yep. And you do that three or four times for 10, 20% each, and this stuff compounding, and it's a completely different looking business. And you get a savvy investor like myself who has been through, you know, tens of thousands of these conversations and has 300 investments and reads the monthly updates. And you're just going to hit a wall when you hit the savvy investors. Cause, and then the ones who are even beyond me, I have a diligence team, but there are some places that have associates who just build business models and they're yep. going to go in there and then tell you, these people don't know what they're doing. So either you're going to look again, incompetent, or you're going to look like you're lying. These are the two worst places to be yep. as a founder. I'm sorry. And we're dwelling on the negative side, but the positive side is if you have these metrics dialed in mm -hmm. and you're updating it every goes month. Right. Yeah. Up. And if they have coffee with you and everything's dialed in, I mean, how impressive is it to you if an hour after you've had coffee with someone, they send the whole financial package, they send oh. the LTV CAC, they send oh. the business plan, and you're, you can make a decision right there. It's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that is the upside, right? We we're talking yeah. about the downside a lot, but there's a super upside to having this stuff be tight, be conservative, or even have an open conversation of it. Hey, listen, our CAC's very low right now. We think that's because, you know, there's a gap in the market. There's not a lot of competitors. It's a new product. Um, and we don't know our churn. So the CAC's certainly going to go up if we take out that churn. Uh, if we define our ideal customer as somebody who uses superhuman for more than a year. And so the looky lose will be gone. You know, the the people who are window shopping will be gone. They're just testing the product. And so we've really got to think that through. Man, your credibility goes up. Another thing I see that kills credibility is when founders are doing self-dealing. Oh God, yeah. This is to me, and listen, I'll, I'll be totally honest. When I was starting my career uh, as a magazine publisher, I didn't pay myself. And I just took a draw when I needed money. So I didn't know what how accounting worked. I had a Bank of America account for my company. I had a Bank of America account for me. If I ran out of money, I would just wire myself some money. I didn't know how to do anything. It was just a company of one. And then I finally got an account and was like, hey, dummy, pay tax, payroll tax on that. And do you have a payroll <laughs> like, provider? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of break. And I was like, oh, how do we clean that up? So yeah. there I was cleaning it up. Um, but let's talk about the self-dealing issue. What have yeah. you seen? What are the big, big no-nos? The biggest one is the one you talked about, which is kind of feeling like um, it's one thing to do all this stuff um, when you're bootstrapping and kind of getting going. But once you've raised that VC money or angel money from someone like you, you are a fiduciary. There is no self-dealing that is legal. It's illegal. It's, it's, you, know, you go to jail for this kind of stuff. The first one is like, oh, I need to make... I, I'm not paying myself, so I got to give myself a little bit of cash this month. And like you said, they forget to run payroll taxes through it. The board probably didn't authorize it. And they go down this path of tons of IRS notifications, penalties, all this kind of stuff for the payroll tax problems. But more importantly, they've broken the trust with someone like you. Yeah. When that. they could have just paid themselves out of the gate and no one would have had a problem with it. The second one is, it's kind of sad, but sometimes people think like, this is my company. It's my money. And mm -hmm. so they use the credit card 
for their own stuff, right? And we've had some unfortunate moments where we've actually had to like report a founder to a board because we're like, hey, this person is not buying poker chips. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, or (laughs) hotels, hmm, strip club, (laughs) accounting. Clothes, like, whatever, you yeah, know. These guys are all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you really can't go to scores and buy funny money. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Definitely like, not. it's not nineteen ninety. 